just like many other cities and towns, Somerville has annual high school awards night. Students get a variety of scholarships. Most are for just the first year of college. This sounds wonderful, but what happens after that first year of college? What replaces those scholarships? Students who needed money the first year need money other years too. Where will the kids find the money the next year? What happens to the students? Do they graduate? Were they ready for college? Who knows? Just imagine, just imagine if these scholarships were renewable and the students could rely on these funds to help them stay in school. Just imagine a math scholarship charity which awards renewable scholarships, then checks in with the students while they're in college to help the kids in the, and then works for the kids in the community to get ready for those college scholarships. That was my initial vision for a math charity back in 2000. What has evolved is the Somerville Mathematics Fund, a grassroots, all-volunteer charity with a mission to celebrate and encourage mathematics achievement in the city of Somerville. What does the Somerville Mathematics Fund do? Well, first, we offer four-year renewable scholarships. That's $1,000 a year. We require a B average and taking at least one math course or a math using class. The kids do not have to be majoring in math, but they do need to be using it. They must reapply with a letter telling the board what they are doing along with their transcripts. You can imagine what we hear from our diverse group of scholarship winners. Some students write of their personal, academic, or health struggles and how they're overcoming them. An engineering student writes of her physical challenge and her focusing on the science of usability. And then we read a renewal letter from an immigrant from Nepal. He writes about his engineering class responding to a water crisis in Cameroon. There was an epidemic of cholera and other waterborne diseases in the area. So my group came up with a simple, cheap, and very effective solution to solve the problem. Our solution is being implemented right now according to our liaison, and it is working well. Second, we offer teacher grants, K through 12, to enrich math teaching in the classroom with a $500 maximum. Teachers have great ideas on how to help their students. They just need some funds to go along with the encouragement. Some ideas we've funded, math games, manipulatives, problem solving materials, math related storybooks, a pre-K and third grade construction project, a 100th day celebration, take home math backpacks, math libraries, and of course, geometric models. We have even funded a proposal by a PE teacher and one by a music teacher who incorporated math into their classroom. Third, we fund family math nights in elementary schools. These are supported by our teacher grants. They started in 2004 and they've spread across the city. Parents and kids come, and usually both K through two and three through five in some schools or in an all school evening, have a pizza dinner and then an evening of games. When they go home, they bring a math activities and games goodie bag. The parents learn about the math their children are doing in school and ways to continue to support it at home. Fourth, we have a citywide celebration of pie since 2003. Imagine having 200 to 350 people show up for a middle school math night. Even on a Friday night, Lots of different math activities run by high school volunteers. The kids are moving from table to table around the gym. Of course we start with pizza, 
but then they're off to solving problems, drawing cardioids in various circles, collecting data, predicting, and estimating. Can you imagine a pie night without pies? We couldn't either, and neither could a local pie company. This high energy evening is co-planned by me and with the help of middle school math teachers. Finally, since 2005, we've held a Scrap Heap Showdown each October. Scrap Heap Showdown is our high school engineering challenge, modeled in Junkyard Wars. It was suggested by some high school kids when we innocently asked, what kind of fundraiser should we have? Be careful what you ask people. I couldn't imagine letting a bunch of high school kids loose in one of Somerville's many junkyards back in 2005. So we created our own unique junk pile. The board designs and then tests the challenges. We have to make sure that every problem has a, a solution, not necessarily the solution that the students will come up with. The kids form teams before the event. They arrive to discover what they, they will be building. At the end of the evening, we have a celebration, a competition. Excuse me. Well, it's a celebration, too. Just imagine arriving to discover you'll be building a paper bridge or a windmill or a Rube Goldberg marble race that does tricks or a musical instrument or zip lines. Basically, whatever the board can imagine and design and build, they, we then challenge the students to build. Phew, that's a lot of math things going on in Somerville. Yes, a math charity can do more than just award the students a check, wish the kids good luck, and wait for the next year to give another kid a scholarship. It all sounds nice, but I can't possibly do that. Back in 2000, I was teaching middle school math. In fact, I'd been doing it for decades. I thought to myself, I might start a math charity when I retired. Then I won a presidential award for my teaching that came with a stipend for improving math and science teaching in my school. I asked the National Science Foundation if it was OK to use part of it for my community, and they said yes. So that was my seed money. But I thought, no time but the present. But how? I sent letters to a bunch of friends asking them to join me for a discussion on how to start a math charity. I had no idea how to do it. We started meeting in my living room in June 2000. By the fall, we had our 501c3. I definitely was a newbie when it came to running a charity, but I asked questions and learned. Lots of questions. We started with the goal of at least one scholarship and one teacher grant. That would mean raising $4,500 each year. Seemed insurmountable to me. But we actually did give two scholarships and four grants that first year. We have a hands-on board, which includes a former scholarship winner. We started meeting in my living room, and we're still meeting there 15 years later. Now, I hope you've been taking notes, because I'd love to see others do set up math funds in every city or town. So what's stopping you? I suspect you have some doubts. But I don't know how to run a math charity. Neither did we. There are lots of resources available. I figured I was able to be taught. I started small and asked lots of questions. But tuition is high. You only give $1,000 a year. What difference can that make? Five years ago, one of our winners spoke at our 10th anniversary. She said, just think how many hours at minimum wage I work for $1,000. Those 125 hours she would have been have spent working at $8 an hour. This is more than three weeks full time that she could have been studying for her computer science and physics classes. 
But after the first year, what happens to the kids? That's one of the questions I asked at the beginning. What happens to the kids? With scholarships that don't automatically renew, the kids have to contact you, and we get to see how they're doing. We also check in for news from our donors. This gives us multiple times to both celebrate and encourage what's happening. But how can we have the kids ready for math scholarships in this multicultural, densely populated town of Somerville? In 2013, Somerville had a population of 78,804. That's about 19,000 people per square mile. The school children speak 53 languages. The teachers have the ideas, so we give grants to support the great math ideas in the K through 12 classrooms. We fund the teachers who know their students' needs best. But we don't have large sums of money to give away. Neither did we, nor do we. We started small. We have grown a bit each year. We've had many donations, large and small, and all together it's worked. By the way, I have personally thanked every donor because they are all important. Since we are all volunteer, we pay no salaries, the money goes to the kids. So what are the results for the Somerville kids? We've been giving away 61 scholarships totaling almost one quarter of a million dollars. Well, actually 242,000 since the 2000-2001 school year. On top of that, we even gave away 204 teacher grants totaling $79,640. Our graduation results? Of the 61 winners, there are 58 who have either graduated or are on track to graduate. That's about 95%, and definitely better than the national average. A few have used some extra nurturing over the years, but have kept on going. That's why we check in a few times a year. There's a small sample, but compared to the national graduation rate of first-time college students after six years of 59%, our Somerville kids are doing really well. Folks have said to me, I wish my town had a math fund. I always tell them, if you want to start one, I will mentor you. But Somerville Math Fund is my focus. We thrive by keeping our efforts here in Somerville with local contacts and volunteers and not by spreading ourselves too thin to other cities and towns. However, I would love to see this grow to cities and towns everywhere. Why not? Great. You're sitting here ready to start a math charity. Hooray. I've given you the model and the steps to follow. Go use those notes. Go forth and start your own math charity. Let's have math funds sprout up everywhere. Thank you.